Hello, a very good evening to you. Welcome once again to Delhi for more action from the Commonwealth Games, the Lawn Bowls. And tonight we have a terrific match in prospect. It's the gold medal match in the men's triples event, and it's South Africa against Australia. Really couldn't get a tastier contest than this one. It promises to be a great night under lights. Well, as you can see, it's uh, a pretty still sort of evening here. Um, I can tell you that the weather today has been very warm. It's still very warm, and it's been pretty humid too, although not quite as bad as some of the other days that uh, we've enjoyed here in Delhi since the competition began. There we are, confirmation at the moment it's 31. Humidity creeping up just a little bit, it's 42% now. Wind speed has dropped a little from what it was earlier. The flags are still, and we could welcome some of that breeze back actually in the main stand where our commentary position is. But despite that, it is a pretty good night to be watching top quality lawn bowls. And not surprisingly, quite a lot of interest in this match, which promises to be another, not a grudge match exactly, but they're not the best of friends, the South Africans against the Australian in this men's triples gold medal match. And if it's anything like they normally are between the two nations, we're in for a great night. Something special about watching action under lights. These are very, very good quality lights, these. Indeed, the whole complex is a very high standard. It's a real pleasure to watch sport here in such good circumstances and such a lovely view. David Bobert is my name. Alongside me is David Corkill. Uh, David, this is a, a really tasty match in prospect, and you are looking forward to this a lot. Absolutely. We have got the lead, who is Johan de Plessis. Now, Johan's been around a long time on the professional circuit as well, so we know him very well. Wayne Perry's the same. Gippo Vermeulen, as he likes to be known, Gideon, but uh, likes to be known as Gippo. Very experienced South African triple. There we have Wayne Turley on the right-hand side and Brett Wilkie. Wayne Turley will be playing second. He is the man that won the, the gold medal in Melbourne with the triples. They brought in Brett Wilkie at lead. I know Brett very well. Mark Casey, another one. Case is brilliant to skip at 28 years of age. Very attacking. There he is. Very attacking player. Very professional. This, this could be very interesting indeed. These guys will play good balls in terms of drawing, but you'll see a lot of driving, you'll see a lot of tactical play, and you'll certainly see a lot of trying to outthink each other, both on a psychological basis and also on the green. Just completing the practice ends. Just wonder if the Australians maybe think they've got a score to settle because earlier, if you're with us in our coverage from Delhi, the last match on this very rink was the terrific women's triples final between these two nations. And Australia were just shaded out by South Africa. Great match it was. If it's anywhere near as good as that, we are in for a treat. But as I say, it's South Africa who took the gold. Um, the Australian men may well be looking for revenge here to help the girls in their moment of defeat. Whatever happens, it's going to be a great match. Two sets, of course, and a tiebreaker if necessary. And indeed, it was necessary in that women's triples final because it was so close. Really hard to call a winner until right at the very end. Dramatic stuff all the way. And if this is like that, we will be very pleased as we go through this evening. the horn going off that's to commence the matches this isn't is not the only match that's going on there are other matches going on around the place particularly on number one green but we'll be staying on this gold medal one for your enjoyment so there we see the three greens and the floodlights as you were saying david this is an amazing place there's no doubt about it it's like daylight out there Terrific quality lights, great greens. It's just really very good. Great view for the spectators. Conditions tonight actually not too bad for spectators. Some of the nights here have been very, very humid and difficult. Tonight it's a bit better. Indeed, the whole day has been better. It was a clearer day. We didn't have any of that haze or smog or fog around early on. The sun has been strong, probably too strong to sit in, but a lovely sunny day. And as you can probably hear in the background, we're very close to the main stadium just behind us. There's an awful lot going there, and you'll hear the noise of that great stadium throughout the evening. But I hope it won't distract from your enjoyment of what we're offering for you here. It's the athletics, that's what they're getting excited about. 
But if you're wanting to stay with us here on the Lawn Bowls, we're delighted to have your company wherever you're watching around the world. It's just 7.30 local time here in Delhi, and we've got the whole evening stretching in front of us, looking forward to a terrific night of top-quality play. Well, I can uh, almost guarantee that we're going to have a great match here, but my goodness, we are going to hear some noise coming from that stadium. So, here we go. Looking good, looking very good. Oh, look at that, first end. Oh, can't it get any better than that? Oh, that's unlikely. Great stuff. These two guys will be very, very serious. They really will be. This is a total professional attitude, total professional way of going about the business. There's a job to be done. We haven't seen the high fives and the smiles and the laughing because this is serious stuff. Four heavy Green Master Premier balls. Well, they're not too bendy, I can assure you of that. But uh, Wayne Turley, Mr. Reliable, known as in Australia. Always roundabouts, always in the area. Very rarely plays a bad game. Well, that's his intention to reach to the balls. Strange delivery of Wayne Perry. Just under it. We'll get a, a good close up of his delivery at some stage, Wayne Perry, because he actually holds the ball backwards at first and then twists it on the way through. Close to that, just holding off. Never easy. It's a good example there, David. See exactly what you mean. Holds it that way and then twists <laughs> in the delivery stride. It's the strangest, weirdest thing, it really is. Here we go. Now he holds the ball normal to this stage. Now normally it would go straight back, but there you go. It twists back and stops. Now I've seen people <laughs> twisting back a little bit on the backward movement, on the pendulum movement, and then twisting it on the way through, but never to stop. Very, very unique delivery. Marquesi, left-hander. Thought the angle would be good for him to come in at this, but this proves just how important it is to get that lead in early. You get a good two balls from a lead, and look at the Aussies, they're having to chase it. Oh. Come on, you look hot, mate, you look hot. Get the fluids in. He's had the, the knee bandage on virtually the whole time in this uh, Commonwealth Games, and obviously carrying a little bit of a weakness there. He's a big lad. Might have been a prop forward or something in his day but a very gentle delivery of the ball. Well, Casey has to be just, uh, we say Casey because he likes to be called as uh, Case or Casey. He doesn't uh, respond as... Here he goes, just a little touch may help. Well, if it drops back and make it second ball, but I doubt it. Good effort. He, he just likes to be called Casey or Case, that's just him. And every time I get an email from him, it's always, you know, all the best, mate, Case. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just the way he is. Good effort, very good effort for the spare shot, which really wasn't a spare shot, only about four inches to get an extra there. Well, it's South Africa off to a good start. Mm -hmm. 
So two points on the board straight away for South Africa at the end of the first end in this opening set. They lead 2-0. Well, I have to say, it's just amazing, this place. Both these countries beat UK opposition in the semi final. South Africa put wheels away 2 0 in sets, and it was 2 1. But Australia beat England and 3 2 in the tie break. Mm. How heartbreaking is that to lose out? on a medal opportunity in terms of gold or silver where you're guaranteed a medal just on one shot. Oh. It's tough. Oh, it's Are tough, it really is. Once again, Yuan's in the area. And once again, he's beating Brett Wilkie to the jack. Well, you'll not only hear cheers and shouts and everything else coming from the stadium, you can just see it there in the background, just over the top of our stand. You'll also hear music as well. It's, uh, you can just hear it at the moment. No doubt our microphones will pick that up, Wayne Turley. Trying to drop it in. A bit more space this end than what there was the last one. It's in here, Wayne. It's the line. A little bit more of an open end this one than it was the last one, but it's still advantage to South Africa. The ball's well and truly hidden, very difficult to get at. Backhand has a plant on, which may go on to the jack of the ball if they want to play it. They can also afford to play it through in the forehand. The trouble with the forehand is if they wing the jack towards the other red ball, they'll be two down. They have to wing it on the inside to get it through to the blue ball. Neither shot particularly easy, but very much available. Has he made it? Well, the Aussies seem to think so. It was just enough. That's that short yellow ball of Brett Wilkie's. Well, 
goodness me, he just brought it across the line, but it was a little touch of the blue ball, sorry, the red stickered blue ball onto the other one that made the difference. <coughs> Sometimes difficult to tell, isn't it, even from that angle? Oh, very much so. You have to be right down over it. It's uh, no matter how good we get. The only way to actually get the overheads perfect is on a, a gantry on the indoor, where we're able to put it absolutely Precisely, right over the top. Yeah electronically move it so it's precisely over the top but our guys do a really good job of giving us what they can Casey just trying to drop in on this if he can. Oh, Mark, this looks very narrow. He was looking for the two red balls. Being left-handed, he should have been able to take probably at least three or four feet more green than that. Always looked narrow out of the hand. Well, David, we were discussing this match and we were asked who was going to win. And, uh, you know, there's Mark Casey, just as soon as he got out of the hand, he looked at them and went, oh, yeah, it's not going to work. And you both looked at me and <laughs> said, who's going to win? I have no idea who's going to win this game, simply because of the quality of players, the experience they've got, the attitude they're going to show on the green. It's a combination of two sets of three people that will play very, very hard balls. Early stages, I know, but what are your early impressions in, in this second end? Very mixed. Very mixed. At the moment, I think South Africa are getting more balls around the jack and in the head just to give them a chance. Now, if you take that last ball, it was about four of the South African balls all around it. One to Australia. I see us coming in. Look at the red balls. One, two, three, four, yellow in the middle. Yeah. So, you know, they're getting 66% of their balls within two or three feet of the jack. Australia had one. Will that continue? I doubt it. Who knows? But anyway, the one for Australia means they're on the board at 2-1 after two out of the nine ends in this first set. First end for Brett Wilkie to beat Johan to place us onto the the jack. Thank you very much, he's saying. Australia playing in yellow. And there's the supporters. Good to see the Aussie team in there. There's Cathy Keegan at the front. Just losing out on that gold medal.
needed an edge just to open it. It's good receiving position. Front ball's not too easy to get to, that's the problem. So Australia in a nice position here. Disappointed at that, but it's almost closed down the forehand. So forced Wayne Perry onto the backhand. That's a good second. You can't get the shot, get a good close second. What a good ball. What a really good ball. Just made it inside, thought it was protected. He made the double. Hey, Turles, take it easy, take it easy. That's it. Good <laughs> man. Enjoyed that, didn't he? Yes. A little leap. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well done. Don't be running up and down too much in the heat in this match, I can tell you. Australia with um, a little spring in their step now, suddenly. So, Australia line, a double at the moment, and difficult for South Africa to get to it. That shot. I <laughs> honestly don't believe that shot. Well, he's just done it. <laughs> I just, I'm looking at the way he Watch. played this. You know, it, it looked absolutely right down the way, but to play it on the edge at the perfect with the perfect line, you know, it's so hard to do to get that absolutely spot on. Didn't appear to be enough room to push the ball between the two. There was no clean way into it, so he used the ball to push in. Oh, that was brilliant. I have to say that uh, Gibbo from Merlin really does look like he's going to have a very good game. Looks very comfortable out there. Mark Casey attacking it to try and get something out of this head, but he looks under. Looks like one more to South Africa. Yes, the one red means that they have another point. And so the lead now goes to 3 1. So it's 3 1, the official score, as we enter the fourth end. Three have gone, and we're starting the fourth end in this first set. 
right now. So fairly tense and tight early on, but the advantage just to South Africa. Plenty of focus on the faces when you look round. There's not much smiling and small talk. They're just concentrating on the job in hand. And the focus is intense. Well, it's a bit loose from both guys at the early stages. Yeah, see, disappointing, that one. Good to see that uh, tighten up a little bit. Just has. This is uh, looking looking very interesting. End this one. It's three one South Africa after three. Australia need to get back into this set soon and it looks like they're trying to do it here. I mean both sides very strong, very experienced, more than capable of giving the best opposition real problems and when the two meet in a gold medal final it doesn't get much better than that. So you can settle back to enjoy what will be an epic battle of sh I'm sure of that. High quality play for you and this will go on for some while this is not going to be over in a few minutes so you can relax and enjoy it <laughs> Yeah, they like that. That's Wayne Perry with the reply. So, as always, it's fairly tense in these opening ends, especially of a gold medal final. And it could change around in a moment, as we've seen earlier. Just dropping underneath. More importantly, a close ball. And that opens up an opportunity as well. Too blue at the moment. Casey trying to add another. He wants to get around the ball, dropped off it. That's where the disappointment was. If that had a drop the other way round, it would have been totally different. Because that would have locked in the South African ball. As it is, the South African ball is a little bit vulnerable. You might see this play down in the backhand for the two balls if he fancies it. It's a good shot. The two balls will disappear. The angle is such that the ball that he hits it with will should run off the head. It might come under his own ball, but I think it'll be safe enough. If he plays a forehand, well, he'll be just trying to come off his own ball or draw it through. So, uh, a tentative forehand shot. Well, he might have been a bit more adventurous. However, let's see where this finishes first. That is a big, strong, biased ball, I can tell you, to come back there. It's a handy one as well.
so, Mark. Conscious of the fact that there's one ball in there belonging to South Africa. He would dearly like to get another ball in in case his own two disappear. A bit more life about this one. Here we go. Oh, is he going to get there? Mm, not quite. It has helped, though, in terms of just exactly what's going to happen. I think he really has to attack this now on the backhand with a little bit of pace. We favourites just two. There's the pace now. Oh, he's under unless he gets lucky. That's not lucky by any means. Took his own closest ball away, means he loses a treble. It's a good big goal for Australia. And they'll be very happy with that three. And that then puts them ahead in the set for the first time. They now lead 4 3. So Australia just starting to find their game and their touch. And they've had a bit of luck. Things gone in their favour as well, but. 4-3, that's the score. That's John McArdle, who's the president of World Bowls Limited, who is the governing body's link with the Commonwealth Games for all the major Commonwealth Games events. South African now, but born in Scotland, and believe me, you would know it if you speak to him. John has still got the broad Scottish accent. Uh -huh. Known John for quite some time now. Under it, Brett. You want to get a wee edge? Ah, that's good bowling. That's really good stuff. Turn it over. Mm. Nice atmosphere here tonight at the sports complex. Apart yes. from this match, there are several other matches going on which have got a good crowd generating a nice atmosphere. Well, there's a, a big crowd turning up just at the other, the other stand, and the, you always know. There we go. The Aussies are getting into it. Of course, for security reasons, they're not allowed to bring their uh, normal supply of, uh, let's just say, leisure fluids. A bit a of a shame, but a there little, we go. You can understand it. Yes, you can understand it. You know. It, I'm sure after a... I think a lot will be consumed if you were allowed to bring some in. After a long day in this heat, that's all. I'm sure the fosters would have been spread around, but sadly, they're not allowed. And for, as you say, David, very good reasons. Well, now this is uh, nicely poised, this opening set. We're into the fifth end. And, well, it's Australia shading it at the moment, but really it's hard to call this one. Yeah, There's nothing in it, really. Nothing in it. Absolutely nothing in it. Each end things change. We knew this it was going to be like this because, uh, so from a technical point of view, these guys are just going to operate at a level where... They'll be trying to work out every single angle. They'll look at the percentages. They'll be looking at exactly what those percentages offer to them. And they'll be trying to reduce the, the margin. Oh, there we go. Mm. 
There we go. Trying to reduce the margins as much as, as much as possible for their opposition. side a long way away he was just trying to tap the ball and it's just saying there that just didn't come back Just under. Good. Mark Casey looking to arrive at this with a little bit of pace. He's looking for the ball onto the ball. He's off the angle. Oh, wow. He was just off target on that one. So not far away there, Mark, but uh, just off. The, you needed to get it absolutely clean, get the perfect result. As it is, it's 1-2 South Africa. confirmation of the one to South Africa and there's nothing in it in this opening set in Delhi in the gold medal event the final of the men's triples it's four all after five of the nine ends so four ends to come and as we thought nothing in it really hard to choose between these two teams both potentially brilliant both playing almost at their peak the odd error here and there but it's just a very interesting match it's don't take your eyes off this it's a tight heads david that's the thing you know and two ball triples is, is very good in terms of it's been reduced from three balls thank goodness it's a really good game and i think i think two ball triples will take off around the world but uh, because it is a very good game but even with that there's a lot of balls getting close which means it develops the head into a situation of a lot of options available for shot play. He's playing well. Uh, uh, Julie Keegan, the Australian triple skip, and just lost out on a gold medal in the last end of a tie break. But She's back out again supporting her colleagues and men's triples, and, and that's what's good about this sport. Doesn't matter whether you've just uh, lost something and you feel down. That's Claire Duke, second. Young girl, 27 years of age, lifting a silver medal in the Commonwealth Games. Lovely. Good effort. Very good effort. Come 
Oh, just off the edge. There's a contingent of the Aussies there. All we're missing is the lead from the triples. Not like Wayne Turley to drop that far short. Need a bit more, okay? Next one. That's all. Just want a good chance, man. Now, Wayne, an opportunity to make up for that poor first one. It's all sort of died down a little bit in this match. Players missing lines and missing their pace. It's a cross finger measure that Australians use. All quiet. The Aussies at the moment. Lovely to see her smile again because during the match she was such deep in concentration it was very difficult to relax too much. Now she can relax and enjoy herself. Her campaign is over and she's got a medal in the bag. Just under. Funny old end, this one, David. There's not an awful lot happening in it. And we're nearly no. down to the last ball. It's finally gone up, suddenly, just got off the ball. Just just a little bit. There's yep. more, more noise from the crickets at the moment. But uh, it's just one of those things. It'll happen sometimes where you get an end that's just a little bit odd. Just untidy. Yes, it is a little bit untidy. <laughs> Oh, look at that boy. I'm sure it was him that crawled up my arm today. <laughs> and onto, onto, <laughs> How onto did my he notes. escape the black kites? I think. I was swooping low. Yeah. All day. He is. He's looking for me. There He'll be he waiting is. for you in the morning. I'm certain he's the boy. I will never be put off by a spider back home ever again. Gentle, gentle. Oh, it just didn't get back in time. As well as a good effort. Two shots confirmed. Well, continuing progress for Australia. Two on blue. Our marker for tonight, Nitin Vazwani. As we watch this last ball coming through again. Perfect line, just couldn't get the weight right.
and the two blue lollipops mean that Australia lead now 6-4 after six of the nine ends in the first set of this gold medal match in the men's triples here in Delhi. Nice line. Johan's been playing very well in this backhand, getting balls in roundabouts. It's a decent starter, I can tell you. Maybe looks a little bit further away on television, but uh, probably about 18 inches. Brett Wilkie, very well known around the professional ball circuit. He played his great friend Steve Glasson a couple of years ago in the International Open in the semi-final. Two of them travelled over together from Australia, having qualified and made it all the way to the semi-final. And he beat Steve in a tie-break. And then lost out in the final to Darren Burnett, who happens to be here playing for Scotland in the pairs. So a lot of these players know each other from different countries. It's a small world. It's a small world, but at the very, very top of most sports, the chances are that there's a group of players who see each other on a regular basis. Brett sliding underneath. Stop, stop, stop. Well, it's not bad. In the area. Just before that tournament uh, a couple of years ago, this man with the yellow balls, Brett, Wilkie had donated some of his bone marrow about four or five months just before he arrived. There he is, and the scars were still still pretty raw, actually. Pretty sore, he was saying, but uh, he, he wanted to make a trip. And uh, that bone marrow went to a young boy, six-year-old in Germany. Him. Good for him. He discovered it was lovely. He's a good lad, Brett. Known him for quite some years. Now, I do get the impression that Australia, having conceded the first couple of ends, at, well, the first three, in fact, then got back to it in the fourth, and they've looked the better team since. So it's just on a fine knife edge, this, the balance of whether it's good or bad or good or bad fortune. And at the moment, it's Australia who are reaping the benefit of playing a bit better. They need 6-4, and we're heading towards the end of this seventh end. Oh. Very good ball. Really good ball. Good pace. That's the important bit. Really good pace. You can hear the cheers going on on the other green. And we have uh, a number of countries playing over there, including India. It's a busy night here. Yeah. It's been it a is. busy day again. It's always a busy day here in Delhi. Lots of matches to get through. Slowly making our way through to the finals. Oh, good effort. Oh. Well, a little bit unlucky to get the edge. Put him onto a ball to ease his own ball away. He wanted to get a clear run. Still, he's sitting pretty well for both teams. Two shots in terms of South Africa, two in the hand, but the back position, the side position, all belongs to Australia. So, Gippo Van Mullen. Change. Well, exactly, Gippo right Van Mullen now. will have to actually try and get a a side ball in to try and get some cover.
Same sort of shot from Mark Casey. He's a left-hander, so he takes a slightly different track to it. This just started to dive down. Now it comes down. Here it goes. He got the ball first for the jack. Oh, wow, that's an unlucky result from Mark. That has made it worse, and he knows it. You can still see it. You can still see the balls in the jack. The difficulty is that it's narrowed the head down a little bit, not just as wide as it was. We'll see it here. Ball coming down. It was nice and wide away from that front ball, and now it's narrowed it down in front of it. Mm. Not easy. Not easy at all. reason with all that noise going on is the other medal match another medal match is going on in the other green involving India the bronze playoff the women's triples Marquesi carried the ball up to have a look now wandering back down again it's still not an easy shot this he's got an even narrower gap to make following the last ball but it's still there <laughs> playing it on the other side hmm well that really is narrow on this side very hard to get back but he's making an effort now he wants clean jack oh just off it Needed a little bit more power to get there, get to the jack to get a clean. He's going to lose a double. Needed a clean one to get to the jack. A thin edge would have been good. Just hit it too thick. Oh, we thought he was there for a long time and. Um, so the two points brings the scores level after seven out of the nine ends in the opening set. Six apiece. Good stuff from Brett Wilkie. Just trying to get down to this. That's another good ball. And a good old battle here, the two leads, I have to say. Yeah, they've done well, haven't they? I love the look of Jan Du Plessis. He's got those eyes, hasn't he? Yeah, it's very intense. The killer eyes, the focus, it's a worrying sight. Well, when he focuses, he does a decent job. Absolutely, and all these guys are very, very similar. That's the lead, uh, Sharon Minshaw, up in their top left corner of the Streetland Triple, just uh, texting away, saying, sorry, we lost out in the tie break. Uh, sad Bye, night for them. And funny enough, I just sent a text a while ago as well, because Steve Glasson the great Australian player had texted me. He couldn't find the result of the women's triples, and he was going nuts, so he texted me to find out. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, mate? I'm going mad, he said. Uh, well, you should watch our coverage. Yes, he said. I texted him back to let him know the bad news. 
we must be available wherever he is. Mm. And Bork just running on the high side, dropping back. <laughs> well, no illusions about that. <coughs> Ooh, that came away very quickly. No. Wasn't a happy bunny about that one right from the start. This is uh, tense stuff again at the end of this first set. It is. One end to come after this, and it's six all. Yes, you sort of think it's. Uh, no one really deserves to lose this one. In some ways, no one deserves to win it because the teams have been absolutely level. So, not much in it. There we go. A little bit more Aussie. They must have a deal or something going on those flags. There we go. No real damage done. There we go. It was a bog off deal. That's it. Buy one, get one free. Hey, she's a happy lady. Oh, See she's, herself on the big screen. She's on the big screen. Yeah, Her exactly. Her big moment. Precisely. Well, there you go. That's a little bit of white life on the lens. I can tell you there's a little bit of wildlife on our monitor as well that's just fighting along it. <laughs> so there you go. We're getting it from both sides. I think we had a spider last night as well. So there you go. <laughs> Don't know how big it was, but I didn't want to find out. Mark Casey just trying to draw this jack back. It's what he's after. Left hand will help with bend. Steady, steady on the ball would be good. Well done. That's the whole idea, get in there, drop in, leave the ball vulnerable as the Aussies get excited about things. Well, this is tense stuff, isn't it? It is at this stage, David, because any big count here would almost secure the set. Yep. Either team losing one shot would not be a major problem, but they certainly don't want to lose any more than one. Find a call. Six all. Eighth end. Come on. Off the front, yeah. Mm, is it going to make it? It is. Oh, just off it and drop back. Oh, well played. Good ball. Not a big reaction from his uh, teammates, just uh, letting him walk up. That was a good one. It's played with beautiful weight, absolutely beautiful weight. The danger there was getting into the jack too early. He could have turned the jack through to the Aussies for four or five. <laughs> I like the Metro low fives. It's just a big hand smack, isn't it? Uh, it is. It is but None of this wimpy handshakes. No, it's, it's very controlled as yeah, well. You know, and quite violent. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I think we're better up here. Let the boys deal with them down there. Well, this is interesting. High quality lawn balls coming to you from Delhi. I hope you're enjoying it. Well, as much as we are, because this is absorbing stuff. Oh, he's under. He was going chasing the jack. I'm surprised oh, he, he played it with that little bit of extra weight. Didn't think he would. Thought he would have played something very similar to his previous ball to rest the red and drop off it or turn the jack for four or five. That has to go down as a very good chance. Uh, that could be expensive. Well, it's going to lose one shot anyway. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no yeah. doubt about that. And to be truthful with you, David, I would be extremely careful if I was going to play this ball because he doesn't want to get to the jack with those four blue balls just behind. No, there's a big danger he could um, donate a big score. It's, uh, if there was a big swinging hand, I would call what I love to call a, a high line drift. Yes, that just Which happens to go nowhere near. Well, it's, it's a high line drift. As you throw it out, you use the mat and you let the ball drift back with good yeah. weight, but you're very, very careful. You might make it just like that. And that's exactly oh, what he's played. That's a, that's a good shot. Oh, that is so good. 
And that is such a hard shot to play. It really is. Big smile, and so it should be too. There's a subtlety to his play at the moment. He's playing it so well. So it's two to South Africa just at the vital moment as we enter the final end of this first set. And they have the advantage. There's confirmation of the two red lollipops. And that means that the score line now looks like this. Eight, six, South Africa. We are now playing just about to start the last end in this opening set. Well, two ends ago, the Aussies were two shots in front at six shots to four. Yeah. Two doubles. Missed the chance to trail a jack for five. And that's what the difference in one bowl in a skip can make. Yeah. Mark Casey with a chance to draw the jack. He missed it. And Kippo Vermeulen had one chance to add the extra shot, and he took it. Good stuff. But in fairness to South Africa, they made the better start. They led after three, three one. Then they were pegged back, but now they've hit back just when they need to at the end of the set. I, I think over the whole of the set at the moment, they're just marginally, just marginally more uh, consistent. Not yeah. much, not much. Maybe just the odd ball or two here and there, but just a tiny little bit. So uh, Australia will be trying to get something out of this set. A draw they would be extremely happy with. Hmm. Well, South Africa looking all right at the moment. Oh, he got that one down slightly narrow, and he knows it. He looked his body and everything told me that that was down on the inside. There it goes. He was just a, a tiny little bit off balance. Yes. That's all. Just yeah. enough. Yeah. Good ball. Tidy. Oh, yes, they like that. Nice and tidy. The ball's partly hidden. The jack is clearly visible, but what sort of target does that present, David? It's narrow. Mm -hmm. Narrow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the thing about it is that at this stage, on the last end, you don't want to go chasing just too much. No. You know, you this really is the don't. final end of the set. You it, don't want to do anything silly. Exactly. You, know, you want just to arrive at Keep it. Keep it simple, that's what you say. It's always the thing about balls. Keep it as simple as possible. He wants to arrive at this. And he's close to the jack. Very close to the jack. He's got it. That's what I mean. He's just arriving at it with just a little bit of weight. Turley just dropping a little bit short. Oh, yes, he, I was just going to say he was a little bit unlucky, but he just tailed at the end to cover the jack. Not totally, but just enough to make it a little bit more difficult. I thought this was going to stay high. Just kicked there on it a goes. bit there, didn't it? Just a tiny wee bit, David. Just enough yeah. to, to make it a little bit hard. That's all. Nothing more, just a well, little bit more difficult. Smile. Don't see much of that, but <laughs> it's a rare sight. Uh, absolutely. Keep your yeah. skip happy. Case, your mate Case. Yeah, Casey. What's he going to do? Going to try and disturb the head. In the area. Needs to drop down. He's close to the ball. Yep, there it goes, and he gets it on the run through for the jack. Beezer.
Oh, this is good stuff, isn't it? Changing all the while. That's a very good ball, a very complicated shot, that. Oh. Playing a cross on the backhand because he's left-handed. Such Drop a small inside. target. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well done, Case, says Bretsky. <laughs> It's a really good match, these two teams. It, it really is. It's so entertaining. Come on, Chippy, they're calling. Come on, Chippy. Oh, he's just not going to make it. <laughs> Anxious moments for both teams here. They're recalling it all the way. And more importantly, it's a second shot. And that's critical because Australia have to score two to try and get this a draw on the set. Well, that could be the key, couldn't it? No, I, yeah. This is not easy for Mark Casey either. They can't watch. <laughs> don't uh, want to watch. Well, What's they don't want to watch. No, it's, it's a really difficult shot, this, to try and drop in. He has to split between the two balls, have enough pace. He's on the outside, and this there's a big, big swing we don't know about. Here it comes. Is he going to make it? Oh, it's dropped in. It could be. Oh, what a good ball. That was so difficult. And the only reason he was able to get back there was because he's left-handed. And that gave oh. him the extra edge to get the ball around it. Because I'm certain he was playing for the gap. But he made it outside with the left hand, and because it was his forehand, he got an extra little dip. Encouraging it on, the boys are shouting at it. Oh, good stuff. Good bowling. Well, they're having a little discussion about this. And why they're having a little discussion about this is the danger, and we can't tell really from that angle, but the danger is if they take their own ball out, what happens doesn't really matter to be truthful because you know they need two shots so taking it out an angle is no no good to them they need to get these two balls clean right. well well i think they're lying two-thirds which means if they take their own ball out just looking at this it won't matter they'll still just lose two shots and the danger is they lose three, and I don't think that's possible the way it sits. So a little bit of pace. Doesn't play with a lot on the shot. Just wanting to rest into his own balls or drive. It's coming down now. It needs to hurry. He's very, very close. Looks good. He's got it. He's got it. And that was a beautifully played shot. Beautiful weight. Really controlled. A big smile. Well, that's quality to produce that sort of shot under that sort of pressure. The one blue to Australia, not enough. There it goes. Takes a second ball out, drops in for second shot. Oh, brilliant play from the skip. So here's confirmation then. It's been a fascinating opening set. Very tight all the way, but in the end, South Africa shading it 8-7. There we go, just dropping down one behind it, just a little bit pacey, that's all.
Oh, that's another good ball by Johan. But it's been a good old battle, this, in every possible department, you know. Nothing between the, any of the, the, the two leads, the two skips and the, the two middlemen. Yeah, it's been good bowling all the way. Just got in front. Just watching behind to see the line from Wayne Perry. Players will often do that. Oh, he wanted to push that all the way. Well, he's brought it out into the open. That's a good ball. And I should explain, David, that one of the reasons why some players will stand behind another player and watch the line is, first of all, if they're using similar bowls and they're both right-handed or left-handed, as we see Wayne Turley's ball coming in, pumping that one through into the open, you know what line to take. But also, what you're trying to do is assess exactly the strength or the weakness of the bias of the person against you. Because somewhere down the line, there may be a shot that you can block and that knowledge is put away, and you know that he is, it's just his ball won't allow him to play it. Yes. So you force him to play a totally different shot, which will be almost impossible or the wrong one, simply because you have assessed the strengths and the weaknesses of what balls he's using. There you go. That's just part of a wonderfully complex match and game. Well, that's what these guys are doing. You know, it's. Um, it's up at a different level, let's put it that way for these guys, it really is. And you would expect that. But that's the assessment tools of what they're trying to, uh, trying to do. They're constantly looking at the, the strengths and the weaknesses of the opposition. Trying to build on their own strengths, probe the weaknesses, check where the opportunities are going to be. Incidentally, if you at home can hear an extraneous voice on a, a loudspeaker or a loud hailer. That's um, some of the police just outside our area near the stadium. They're controlling the public access, so they're pedestrians and cars both leaving and entering the stadium area. And um, that's what you can hear. So it's Sony security. It's nothing to worry about. But it is there now and again during the afternoon and tonight. But just to explain it, that's what it is. It's not there all the time. It won't spoil your enjoyment. Oh, what a big ball this was. Oh, absolutely perfect. No touches, nothing. Straight onto the jack, trails it back for four. Oh. And suddenly, Mark Casey is in a heap of trouble. Come on, Case. Come on, Case, they're shouting. Come on, Case. Oh, he got the thin edge. Well, that might help. It's certainly going to take one or two off. That was a very good effort, wasn't it? Just a little bit more, it would have been even better. It's a very short end, so it's difficult for, for us to, to get over the top of it. So, it's at a slight angle. At least we can see more of the head when it's this end, because the players aren't blocking our view, David. Which is wonderful. Which is great. Please Come. stay there. <laughs> yes, absolutely wonderful. Oh, is this going under? It doesn't have the pace to carry it. Well, that's one out. I tell you what, if the Australians get away with one here, that will be a brilliant ball from Mark Casey. It's only the first end of the second set, but you want to set the tone. You don't be losing big counts. Oh, two shots. Two red. So that's the way they started the first set. 2 0. And they've repeated it at the start of this second set, having taken the first set just 8 7. There it is, confirmation 2 0 at the start of this second set. Just one of these nine ends in the second set gone.
And they like that. Steady stuff. It's what it's all about. Get the balls in there 15 inches, 18 inches away. You build heads, you offer the opportunities to the next two players to build on that. And the chances are you're not going to lose large counts, and that's the important thing in the, the nine end sets. Good ball, little nibble of the jack, that helps. Helps even more when you're dragging the jack away from the short balls and bringing your leads balls into play. That little punch there, that doubles the distance, really, from taking the, the jack away from the short balls. Oh, steady, steady win. And don't do yourself an injury, man. Just under, but he's come to a good place. Covering the back balls. that one it's actually not bad where it's finished in some respects because simply because it's actually covering things Good ball. Oh, yes. Wonderful correction. Absolutely wonderful correction. First ball just a few feet beyond. Took it off with the, the same line. Not easy to do. Top shot, Wayne, my boy. Well, once again, Mark Casey's uh, been given something to think about. And that in itself tells you the story of the way this match has gone, really, doesn't it? He's been in this situation a few times. Well, both skips have. He's close with this. Jack, Jack. Oh, and it bounced. It bounced back up again. He's got it. Oh. Jack bounces, going in behind, he's taking his own two balls off at the back, but that doesn't matter. There you go, there's the two balls, and he took the other one off as well. So he's got the shot, and he's got the best back ball. And oh. there's no way he could have intended that. No, 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 definitely not. He didn't intend the Jack to go forward either, but he'll take it. This certainly is not easy to come through here. Yeah, just running past it. Steady, steady, steady. Doesn't want to lose the ball. Stayed on the edge of the ditch. That could be useful. Not easy in any way to get back on that side. 
Surprised he played it actually. I thought he might have played the other side. Never. Bit of noise still around the place. Oh, that's good. Nice atmosphere. Absolutely. Lovely evening to be watching sport at this high level in a beautiful setting. It's almost, almost a pleasant temperature. Yes. <laughs> the humidity is still high, but it's lovely. It is extremely pleasant, I have to say, in comparison to some other nights. Now, are you going to get the edge that you need, Mark? You are. You've got the edge. Mm, lucky enough there. He was going away from that at some pace, and uh, not big celebrations from the from the Aussies. Probably would have slipped away from the head, as it is. He's come back in again to lie a double. Oh, well, this one might get the treatment. And what I've discovered here about South Africa when they're playing, it's those little in-between shots. They're very, very accurate, but they haven't been playing a big drive, and I wonder why. Is this something to do with that leg? This is the big drive now. Close, Jack. Oh, the gap, I don't believe it. Yeah. That was the beans. Well, he certainly got the big dog out on that one, but uh, <laughs> I did notice on delivery, he didn't look desperately comfortable yeah. as he planted the left leg. Because that's what you have to do whenever you're driving very, very hard. You have to plant the left leg. It's all forward body movement and arm strength. But he was using a lot of arm and shoulder strength rather than forward body movement. So, that's good for Australia. The two for them that you're seeing there puts them right back in this second set. Yeah. That's the indication that David got that that wasn't a comfortable delivery stride mm -hmm. for Mark Casey. He's got that heavy strapping, but he didn't appear terribly comfortable on delivery or just after. And that means that the score is now 2-2 in this second set. South Africa shading the first one, 8-7. Yes, he's a big lad. Could be for, for Mullen, and uh, as we look at Johan, the lead. Whenever you're planting that leg down and you've got whatever weight he is, all on one leg and forward movement. Yeah, if there's a pain in there, it's yeah. going to really hurt. It's, it's under a lot of pressure, it really yeah. is. And um, the full drive is always going to be an issue. Although I have to say it was a very, very good drive. Just a little bit unlucky. It wasn't far out. Bert Wilkie getting the better of the South African skip on this end.
The moths are starting to get going. You can see on the bank and on the green. Not only that, but uh, some of our little flying friends are starting to visit. Yeah, there's a few around, aren't there? Hmm, bit of a loose one. Hasn't been too many of these, I have to say. Quality has been extremely high. Well, a very loose end by South Africa and Australia have an opportunity here. Well, this is a, a very strange head of balls in many ways. Most of them straight on. Nothing that looks easy about it from a South African point of view. They lost their way, didn't have any close balls or haven't had any close balls so far. Mark Casey in with a chance of putting this one in, but, well, he's dropped short, and to be truthful with you, that's not where he wanted to be. However, having said that, you just never know. I don't think it's doing any harm where it's sitting. And this is a problem for South Africa, a real problem. Lots of holes, lots of gaps, balls in the way to try and draw around, which are not helping, I can tell you. The three balls that are in front, not one of them is offering a real target as such onto others. There's just a chance you might get one out, you might get two out. And that's why he's trying to draw this. Didn't like the look of the drive with the gaps and the holes. Tell you what, he's trying hard with this. They're calling it. Come on, Jippo. Oh, I tell you. So close to being a brilliant shot. His second ball. I tell you, he's done really well to get second ball out of that head, I can tell you. Bearing in mind he was on the other side with a previous ball, that's a really good skip shot to get out of trouble. Not much good fortune in that. If he'd had good fortune, he'd have made it. It was a great effort. I tell you what, if he's second shot, I'd be absolutely ecstatic. I wouldn't be thinking at all about anything other than the fact that he's played a really good ball. Now, Mark Casey's in with a chance here. Why I'm saying that is, look at the yellow ball in the centre of your picture. The red one beside it is the problem. If Mark Casey can get onto that yellow ball and make the split, he can punch the red one out. But in doing so, he's got a massive amount of danger because <laughs> if he hits the red ball onto the jack, look at the back position. Four red balls. The green one with the red sticker goes on to it. He's going to lose five. So he either picks up five or loses five. Oh, <laughs> what a choice. Oh, nightmare choice. Better just to draw. <laughs> just try and draw the shot, and that's what he's doing. That's the reason why you, a lot of people may think he was just trying to uh, go for that ball. It just wasn't worth it. It was far too dangerous. One on the blue. 
means that Australia get the point. Yeah, a happy boy with that one. I and can also tell you. They get the lead, yes. They go 3 2 up in the second set. Some of the Aussie support. So we're into the fourth end, still really nothing in it. Even though South Africa took the first set, it's just a point in the second one. Well, there's been a couple of big chances, I have to say, but uh, not easy ones in terms of uh, the complexity of the, of the shot that was required because there was lots of danger involved for both skips. Both from the end shied away from the takeout shots or the big trails that were available. Very steady balls, he really has. He Brett. has been consistently good. Yes, he has, and Brett's played well too. It's been a good battle between the leads. Good effort, good effort. Little bit unfortunate to open it up. Good on the other hand now. Weight was good. Mm. Only one ball in there. They have to be a little bit careful. The Aussies don't want to take their own ball out. They want to extend the jack through the head if they can. This might change it. That gives them two balls in the area. Wayne Turley looks like he's feeling the heat, doesn't he? Mm. It's, it's all... In every sense. Just watching this ball coming in again. Good solid connection. Keeps it in. Unfortunately, two balls can go out, but Mark Casey happy, as is Brett. But it's all very tactical in a game like this as well. Being bombarded, David? Yeah, so, so. <laughs> There are some fairly They're large things <laughs> flying around right now. They're coming in on Keep waves. crashing into my headset and They're yours. They're coming in on waves, and that's all. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah. 
or just underneath and so on. No, I was just going to say, David, there. It's it's a very tactical game. This it really is. Well, you it's, warned that this would you know, be not quick. It's very no. tactical. It's a testing game, and um, in many ways, it's a very suitable game for a gold medal playoff. You know, it's. You want this sort of game. At the same time, you want just a little bit of fire. And both, both camps are being very, very careful. Oh, look at those, you beauties! <laughs> They're coming to see you very soon. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> we'll do well. Oh dear. Not too worried about those boys. They're they're fine. <laughs> so. We are at the moment. Don't tempt fate. Oh, we'll just drop back. Oh, there, there you go. There's one of your chums. He's There's coming the boys. Way. There are the boyos. That's my mate. Hey, go for it, big lad. You think he's small? That thing was about six inches in length. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it was a tricky little head, that one for both triples. One red means it goes level once again. After four. There it is, 3-3. Three, three. You might just be hearing some uh, PA noises in the background or police colleagues over here are working away with people coming out of the main stadium, still trying to get pedestrians and cars and everybody else out safely. Once again, the two leads putting down good balls. This is great stuff, it really is. Look at this. Oh, magical. That's the idea. Well, I have to say, both of these triples have thoroughly deserved to be in the final. They've been playing really, really well. Match is cleared now from all other greens except for the playoff ones. The gold medal in the men's triples and the bronze medal playoff in the women's triples. Pace just dropped under it. Oh, it's uh, it's not bad hand that backhand coming in this direction towards the comedy box. It's it's a useful hand if you drop back. And we're just getting a few bugs out of the way there. Brett Wilkie saying, I don't want my ball hitting that.
That was worthwhile. He obviously didn't want Wayne Turley's ball to hit it either. Oh, there's a little friend there. Oh, there we go. Just split across it. And the problem is, and this, this is a bit of an issue, that some of the very small moths are not a problem, but the larger ones and uh, rather other animals that are, you know, can walk about the place, you get big locusts and stuff, they can actually make a bull deviate from, from its line. There you go, that's one of the, our little friends that can do that. Yep, that's the dangerous one, I think. That's the one that they don't go anywhere near in terms of lifting. Just inside Mark Casey, he was being a little bit gentle with that. <laughs> He's a boy. He's colourful, isn't he? Look at that. It's fascinating. There's no doubt about it. Well, look at the. And we're here for bowling. <laughs> There we go. Nice wee shot through the gap here on the forehand if he wants to play it. A little bit of movement there if somebody walked past. Uh, sadly, not everyone that's involved in the Commonwealth Games are aware of the rules regarding balls and the disturbances behind the head. So just stop for a moment, be patient. Trying for the big ball, but he's into the pack. Oh, well. He's come out smelling of roses, I think, on that one. Certainly wasn't what he played, I can tell you. Off target. Hit a ball short. Jack moves. Mm. And again, he looked uncomfortable on that delivery stride, David. There's a problem there, isn't there? Yes, I mean, he's, he's doing awfully well to survive with that left leg being strapped. It's probably a precautionary thing. But I'm watching his movement on it, and believe me, that doesn't look that doesn't there look smooth. There is a slight limp there as he walks, yep. let alone as he delivers the ball. And that wasn't there before, I can tell you. Those heavy drives, because you're putting so much on the front foot, you're planting that foot really hard onto the ground, trying to get your arm and your shoulder and your full body weight behind the pace of the ball. Going again for the ball, close to it, but inside. He had two seconds, and that's the reason why. So, good ball by Mark Casey. He secures the single. And that single point means that uh, it's Australia back in front, but just by one. There's a lot of power went into that, but... So, still nothing in it, but Australia just ahead once again, 4-3 in the second set after five of the nine ends. So away we go with N6 in this gold medal match between South Africa and Australia in the men's triples, and it's been great stuff. Right from the start, really nothing in it. The opening set just shaded by South Africa, 8-7. And really the same pattern in the second set. A good early lead for South Africa. Hauled back by Australia, level, and then they took the lead. And now they're back in front, having been pulled back. 
it's 4-3 to Australia. So who could predict with any confidence the way this set is going to go? Remember, oh. if it finishes at one set apiece, it's tiebreaker time. Well, it really is why I was sitting on the fence. Normally, I just get a little inkling one way or the other, and you sort of think that you've got an idea where a match might go in one particular direction, albeit only slightly, but not this one. But did you not get the same feeling in the women's triples that it was just there was really nothing in it and it could go either way? I exactly, and even more so as I was watching the match. Uh, I thought to myself it was always going to be a long game right from the start. And it, actually, it, it came down to what we thought it might do in the end, David. It came down to actually one rather fortunate result that yes. the wicket came across. That's how and, these things uh, work, isn't it? Well, exactly. It was so little between the two teams. I have a feeling, as you say, that this is going to be the same. Looser in this end. Can't keep it up all the time. Oh. Well, there we go. That will start to tighten things down again. a little bit confusing when teams use same coloured balls on, on occasions and they have to rely on the stickers. Needs an edge. Oh, didn't get it, but it's a good ball. Thought he was going to get an edge just to uh, ease him off in terms of the weight. Just an edge would have been lovely there, just have taken a foot or so off. Still good though, very good ball. Wayne Turley on the backhand. No, is he going to get back in time? He's looking good with this. He wants the two balls, first one, then the other. He got it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. A subtle shot, a beautifully played shot. So good when he plays that sort of shot. He's got the subtlety to play those shots. Controlled weight, good draws. He's a very, very subtle player when he wants to be. That's a beautiful draw. Big man, it's just amazing the subtlety, the delicacy of touch there. Yeah, it's definitely there, there's no doubt about that. Oh, goodness. Trying to come inside with a bit of pace. Took off the front one. Moved him off another. Oh, Casey wasting no time. Yep, a wick off the front one, a wick off that, into the back out of the way. No real problem in terms of uh, getting that close. He was probably about two inches away from the perfect result. He has got the best back ball, of course. There we go. 
There's nothing to eat there, friend. There's something on that boat, but there's nothing there to eat, so off you go. You can try the jack if you want, but that won't help either. <laughs> Something flew in there that wasn't too good. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. I think it was. Oh, <laughs> he's not sure about that, whatever it was. Maybe did more damage on the reaction now, Mark. Can you get back down? It looks heavy for me. Yes, it is. So one it is to South Africa. One to South Africa. There you go. Oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't too good. Hey, up. I think he might have thought that was a moth, but I'm not sure if it was a moth. I think it might have been something just a, a little bit more dangerous than that. I have a f get the impression he's been stung, actually. It's now four all, though, in the second set. Nothing in it at all. 8-7 South Africa, the first set, 4-all now. Who could pick a winner here of this second set? This is now the time when things start to get very, very tight. The last three ends. The run for home for South Africa will mean the gold medal in this set. If Australia managed to get past them in this set, we're in the three-end tiebreak. It's been an engrossing match, it really has been. That's tidy. That is tidy by Wayne Perry. And what I mean by tidy, it means that there's nothing messy about the way the ball is, is sitting there. It's one in front of the other. It makes it nice and neat, symmetrical, and hard to get to, hard to hit. There we go. Wayne Turley after it. Jack, 
He will run through into the ditch with the runner. The jack will go out onto the respot. That's uh, killed about three dozen moths in one go. There's the toucher. Big drive, big backswing, big body movement. Boom, there it goes. And that kept the ball. On the run through is quite important because he got his own, but that straightened him up to go back into the ditch again. That's the number one shot. Marcus his backhand. This should hold up a long time before it starts to dip. There it goes. Now it'll start to bend. Right at the end of its travel. But has he pushed it? Well, I'm not sure. As you say, David, this is really tense because at the end of this end, that's seven gone, just two to go. The run for home, it's so important not to make an expensive mistake. That's the whole thing, David, yes. You're just trying to keep it tight and one shot here and there, but every single ball. Oh, look at this. Is he taking it away? He is. He's got it back. He was trying to draw the shot, and he probably would have drawn the shot without touching the jack anyway, but that extra touch was a major bonus. Oh, that puts Mark Casey under a degree of pressure here. It really does. He's going to have to increase his pace. He's going to have to slide underneath his own ball or else hit it very hard. Oh, he's hit it and that's taken all the weight off. It's going to be two to South Africa on this one with a spare shot opportunity to make three and absolutely no danger whatsoever. point I was making just a moment ago. Yes, keep it tight. So, he's been very good at these spare shot chances, generally speaking. He's in the area. Now, he wants to keep it on the green because he hasn't got much room to play with. Is it Too trucking strong. into the ditch? Oh, that was a missed one. That could be very costly at the end. Two on red. Means South Africa get two more. Well, as you say, it should have been three. That would have made it. That was a costly Slightly goal. Slightly more comfortable. He knows oh, that's a missed chance. He doesn't, did he? He'd be annoyed at that. He really will be because, you know, it was three and there. there. Six four. It should have been seven four. The in the second set. The value of an extra one there, David, is that going into the next two ends, you just have a little bit extra to play with. Well, the centre here is rather incredible. Coming late in the evening now, approaching 25 minutes past nine local time. Warm, balmy, not even a hint of a breeze. And this final really is a very, very good game. Shorter mat for this penultimate end of the second set. Big screen here at the JN Sports Complex is now showing this match as well. And as you say that, it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> I think they must have thought better of it. Yes. I think it just comes on every now and again. Just to, uh, yes, it's, uh,
Ooh, good effort, Brett. It's a really good battle with these two boys. Fantastic battle with the leads. Dropped a bit short there. Aussie team. I have to say that you really would struggle to know where they're from, wouldn't you, David? <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. The national pride is wonderful. And it's good stuff. No reason why not. But my goodness, they go for it in a massive way, don't they? I think what gave that away was that just in front of those two, Natasha Van Eldick was sitting. And she's a familiar face in the Women's pairs. Oh, that's kicking off. No, Wayne's putting his arms up to say what happened, but it just kicked off very slightly. Still, it's come into it's into a good place. The difficulty is that there's Wayne's so frustrated with it. But um, it's blaming the bugs. Well, <laughs> there's, there is a crawly one down there, which looks pretty vicious. There we go. That just kicked out. Mm. You get the reaction of uh, Wayne Turley wasn't, yeah. Oh, what happened, man? What's going on? Well, it happens. It's just the way it is sometimes in outdoor greens. It's uh, it's not easy for the players occasionally, but there's a chance here for Mark Casey if he can drag the jack back. The trouble is there's a lot of gaps around there, and if he misses this, they're going to be in a heap of trouble going into the last end. He's in the area, I'm going for a clean jack. Has he got it? Oh, well, that's good. Well done, going for a clean jack, that's not easy. It was a very deliberate shot to try and get the jack to bring it back. Push it to his own ball. That's a good result, I'll tell you what. It's not the best result, not by a long chalk, but it's a good result. Now the game will slow down a bit. Conference time. I'm still chatting it over. easy to play this shot because he has to be a little bit careful of his own ball. Hmm. That's a good ball there, I can tell you. That is a good ball, that's why they're clapping it. It's a very good position ball, very handy. It's not always about getting to the jack. Sometimes you have to defend, even, even from a, a deficit position. He's one down and he's defending 
the side and at the back just to make sure he doesn't lose any more. Yep, well played. Not always easy to work these things out, I can tell you, because uh, everybody's got their own tactics. Mark Casey, does he go for the ball? That's what the chat is. No, this is very, this is very dangerous. It really is. That's what they're discussing. That's what that's what we're saying. Well, now guys, what do we do? Do we go for the ball and go for three? So we get into the last end with a real good, strong chance of winning the set. Do we draw for another one? What are the options at the back and the side? Well, they're not too pretty, I can tell you. The options at the back and the side either. So I think just draw another shot here because two, if he gets two, he gets level. And then just have a one end shootout. There's a young couple there just watching the balls and uh, very content to do so. Marks out there. I think he's having a little go at this. He certainly looks like he's heavy enough for it. Well, maybe not. Maybe he just got it away a bit. Yeah, it was kicked out, didn't do much. Oh, there's a another little animal that needs to be sorted. Well, there is a little shot on here. Now I just wonder will he take it take the risk of trying to edge the ball off? or just turn the edge of the jack. He could bounce the jack across to his own short ball, which is at the top of your picture. It's got to be worth a little look. Oh, goodness me, there you go. He's walking out into a bit of danger here. There's absolutely nothing to eat where those are. It's an evening snack for someone. Well, he's down on the line. He's down on the line, they're looking at it. Good weight, so if he took it out, which he has done, he would stay in his place. That was a good, a good shot, a good clever shot. Good pace to make sure there was no damage done. These boys are playing good stuff, there's no doubt about it. So it's one to Australia. So, heading off into the final end of the second frame, it's 6-5. So 6-5 it is, and you can see that on the big screen as well as the players play away from it. I was looking at the big frame up over the far end there, and the one beyond it in the infinity shot. That's what. <laughs> it's late. My eyes. It's late in the evening, David. It Don't is. worry. It really is. I suddenly is. thought we've got a hundred shots <laughs> exactly. there disappearing into the distance. It's been a very long day. <laughs> Where are we? What is this? Exactly. What day is it? Don't know. That's interesting. What on earth is going on there? Because the jack's been played. Yeah. Now that is most unusual. I'd love to know what was going on there. Hmm. Just about to play the ball, dropped it. Yeah, changed his mind. Well, I think he'd been called down by his skip. I can't imagine what they were talking about because the jack had already been rolled. So once you cast the jack, the game is effectively in motion. It's a decent start. Bit of support for the South Africans up underneath the stand. Just to point in it, it's so close. It's well, as we thought it would be, really impossible to predict. It, it's exactly the way it was always going to be, yeah.
Well, it's very warm out there, very sultry, but the guys are doing the best they can to keep cool. Brett's after it. He's just going to slide under, doesn't want to touch it. Well, the little nibble didn't do any harm or won't do any harm. He just didn't want to push the jack in behind the ball. And this is building up yet again to be another tight mm. end as we face the last end of the second set. Australia have already lost out in the women's triples to South Africa. Are they going to lose out again in the men's? Early. Well, a little punch on the ball would be good for him. A turn of the jack would be good. They only need two shots. He's so good, Winter. He's so reliable. He really is. He's looking at it very carefully. This is going to come down pretty quick at the end. There it comes now. Ball out solid. Oh, not enough. But a good ball. Makes one. Just needed to get to the inside of the ball. He hit it too solid. Wayne Perry, he's trying hard with this. He's so close as well. Little touch. Oh, he has to be careful. That's good. That's very, very good. This is great stuff, isn't it? So tight. Well, people may think that he's bringing the jack to the Aussie ball, and it's not good, but it is. It's another ball in the head. Now, Turles being told by Mark Casey, reach the balls. Reach the balls. Indicating where he wants it. Struggling to get back. Not going to make it, but that's good because he's pushed one behind. The last three or four balls have had so much value. Now, there's still a draw shot in here. There we go. There's only the one. The thing is that there's two red balls. That's the two light blue ones to the left of the jack. One Australian one, the yellow one. Below the picture on the, one of the outside rings is a blue one, which is also Australia. So South Africa need another one in. Big moment for a big man. Oh, it's going under very quick now. I don't think he's got the pace to carry it. Or has he? No, he hasn't. They were looking very, very carefully at it just to see. This is a chance now for Mark Casey. I just wonder what way he'll play this because there's a drive shot in his forehand that would take the two balls out clean as a whistle, but probably take one of his own out. But that doesn't matter. I have a feeling that he's got more balls in there than he really needs in terms of scoring. For him to play the backhand, he's going to come across the line with the left hand. Yes, he is. He's coming across the line on the left hand. Have to keep this reasonably narrow. That's a pretty good line. That should hold a long time. Now it'll start to move. Now it'll come down. Yeah. Balls and in the jack. Ball in the jack. That's it. Always look good. That is an absolute cracker of a ball. An absolute beauty kiss. Well played. And not only that, but just watch where this ball goes when it hits the first one. The jack hides in under underneath. It's leaving a single ball for South Africa to remove. Beautiful weight. 
This is really tense stuff, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Just the very end, possibly. Absolutely fantastic of the stuff. Match. Almost certainly the end of this set. Well, it's just what we wanted. Really good stuff. And will he get down from there? It's trying, but I think it's going to hold off just outside the line. There we go. As we thought, it's into a tie break. Aussies pumped up. Toss the coin. Who's got the choice? Two on blue for Australia. And that means that they've taken the second set. 8-6 South Africa. 8-7 uh, rather in the first and 6-7 down in the second so we move into tie break territory and who would call this one now david it's just impossible well it was exactly the same in the women's as well it was just always going to be tight 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 stuff we knew it was going to be tough we knew it was going to be a hard game it's been fully justified and to be fair the boys now it's just well no two ends two hours and ten minutes slow enough but it is a gold medal playoff so there's a lot at stake here isn't oh there? absolutely management and, they, and players it hasn't felt slow no no it's but been absorbing stuff all the way it it's been a highly technical game and one for the connoisseur in terms of understanding what exactly has been going on we've been doing our best to explain it to you folks at home but uh, there's a lot been happening Unfortunately, I don't have my little favourite telestrator with me. I would have been drawing diagrams all night. Yeah. I should explain exactly what the telestrator is for some people. It's the opportunity to draw on the screen just what options are available for players and I use it quite a lot in various places around the world, but this is a major championship and it's slightly different. Oh, three and tie breaks are always very tense affairs. Accumulated shots over the ends, of course. No longer is it a matter of winning two ends, it's a matter of accumulating sufficient shots at the end of three ends to win the match. In theory, it can be over in two if one team scores more than six shots in the first two ends. Oh, that's under. Mm. It's been a long day for these players. Difficult day. They will be tired. They will not be dehydrated. They've been putting in a lot of fluids in, but uh, the concentration is the difficult bit, David. You know, the, the difficulty there is just all about, you know, do you suffer from headaches with that sort of concentration level for hour after hour after hour? You hope you're a fairly laid back sort of character. It's a lot to deal with the heat, the humidity, the lights, and the quality of the opposition. What's good, Wayne? Get back to that. Advantage, South Africa. A lot of Australians just behind the rink. Gently, gently, he doesn't want the jack. Gently, gently, he wants to be in front. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's a bit of a target. 
Turles yeah. might have to go for this. It depends what sort of pace he's going to use. Could do with another ball in the head, though, with Australians. Yeah. Controlled weight. That will slide away pretty quickly as the pace comes off. That's the danger. There it goes. Hmm. Well, this is building up now because you don't mind losing one. Two shots in the first end will annoy you a little bit. Losing three shots, well, that really is a pain. Okay, you're serious. Well, it means you're chasing the next two ends to try and recover. You know if you lose a, a three shots and then maybe a single the next one, you've virtually no chance. Mark Casey has to be a little bit careful here. He doesn't want to get his own ball. Oh, he's turned his back. It gives me the impression he's too heavy. Yep. Oh, I knew as soon as he let it go. Yep. And the ball's only away about six or seven yards when he was doing that. Getting very nervy now. <laughs> Going for position, happy with three shots. The back position is not exactly brilliant. Tell you what, that's, that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Mark Casey, now Mark. You can afford to lose one, mate, but not three. Oh, that seemed to drop off a little bit early. He's in the area with this. Oh, there's a kick out. Will it get back? He's very close. Oh, just on the high side. Definitely moved two or three times on the way up. Well, it's not a disaster, but it's certainly not great to lose three. Three is, I would have thought, bad news. Yeah, so just kicked off once or twice. And that's with his left hand on the forehand that normally dips in. So we're into the tiebreaker and South Africa, a 3-0 lead after the first end. It's not terminal, but it's not very good news for Australia. It's tough. As you say, they've got to chase it now. It's tough. It really is. You know, you're talking with three shots, and there's only been one three scored in this match, and that was on the fourth end for Australia in the first set. So that's just uh, number two. It's been tough, no doubt about it. Good start, Brett. Oh, oh that's going to be close to the ditch. Centre jack, and there's only a couple of feet left at the end there. Well, this is actually quite interesting. I mean, the mat's well up the green, and things can get a bit tough here for players because if they're only just slightly over the weight, 
They're going to roll in the ditch. At the same time, if he picks the jack up and runs it into the ditch, that's it all over. Needs to stop in time. It's good. It's good. Oh, that's brilliant. Better than good. Now, the only danger there is for South, uh, or sorry, for Australia here is that South Africa ditch the jack and stay with it. And that's the end of the party. Shake hands. Oh, I went in with some pace. He was looking for the ball. The value of a toucher here, and Australia have one, is very, very great. He's close with this. He's very close with this. Will it bend down in time? It's in front. That's a very good leading. You're talking about what? You know, half a meter, probably half a yard from the ditch. That's very, very good stuff. It really is. Hard for me to explain just how difficult a shot that is. This is going to get complicated, David, isn't it? You can just tell. <laughs> <laughs> I can sense it coming. Yes, exactly. Good result if he can get the two balls. That's what he's after. Well, it's under. And the only problem with this is if you're not going to hit anything, that's two balls that they've lost out of their six. So, 33% have gone. Yeah. They always looked under, and Turles knew that. So, not easy to get to in terms of the clean jack, but they'll stick to the backhand. I thought they might be slightly tempted with the other side. Mm. That's going under. Yeah. I heard Mark Casey say another chance, and he's right. Ball on the ball, ball on the jack. That's what they need. If they can get that jack in the ditch and take off the two balls, it would be good for Australia. He's better with this. He's certainly much better with this one. Got one of them. Yep, there it goes. But also another one of his is gone. So that's now 50% gone. <laughs> oh, fascinating stuff. What a conclusion to an enthralling men's triples event in Delhi. For the gold medal, remember? Commonwealth Games gold medal, waiting for these one of these teams. Oh, look at this. He's put it back. He's put it back in a better place. Oh, he's, they're shouting at it down. It didn't drop. Oh, well, that's very good, isn't it? It is, but it's a ball on the ball situation. And really, if the Aussies lose any more than one shot here, they don't have a mission in the last end. It's horrible thought of going into the last end looking for five or six shots. That looks under. Oh, it's well under. And it's another ball lost. Oh dear. Gets his own ball now, and it's, well, it's almost shake of hands time. Well, it just got away from them a little bit, but only from the point of view that South Africa played a couple of very, very good balls, and there's not a thing they can do about it. It's just the way it is sometimes. Not over just yet. Yes, we have a bug on the, the lens, folks, so don't worry about it. Don't go rushing up to your television, scratching your lovely new 50-inch plasma. <laughs> There you go. We've got rid of it for you. <laughs> there it is. We don't have time to get him off in a match like this just at the moment. 
We might get there when we get to the next end, if we get to the next end. Well, we're all sharding, that's good. Both sides, because you can use it off the side of it. But Mark Casey needs to be in the area with this one. It's close, but he looks under to me. He doesn't want his own ball, though. Ooh, that really would have been shaking hands time. It's almost shaking hands time now, because it's two for South Africa. And yes, it always looked under, and Mark knew that. And one of those things, Mark, it happens. But it's beginning to look more and more like the silver for Australia for the second time today. They're calling it to get in. They're calling it to get in. If it stops, and it is, well, that could be close. <laughs> Looks like three. Oh, it's a very good ball. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. Three shots it is. So three on red to South Africa. Well, just watching this ball going in, it just seemed to sit on a little ledge at the How edge. How did that not go? Well, good weight. Perfect ball. 6-0 in the final end. Well, there hasn't been it's even... the tie break, of course, after one set all. Well, there hasn't even been a sniff of a count beyond three or four in this, not even close to a four. So this will be a closed down situation. Mix the balls and Australia in a heap of trouble. If that goes in the ditch, they'll shake hands. It's gone, shake hands time. They've given it away. Yeah. yeah, that's understandable. He had to be reaching. Brett Wilkie realized that it was no good just drawing to the jack and dropping short. So effectively a no score in the last end. Last end, it's going to be 6-0 in a tie break as the boys celebrate. Good attitude, nice to see the reaction of both triples. It's been a memorable match. It's so difficult to call it, but this is the final verdict on the score. South Africa win it, 8-7, 6-7, and 6-0 in the tiebreaker. Congratulations to them, but Australia fought them all the way. It was an entertaining match. And uh, I hope you at home enjoyed it as much as we did here. It's really been absorbing. Just about two and a half hours or so of the action. But um, you couldn't remember much of that time because it went, you were so absorbed in the quality. Absolutely. You know, it's uh, from a ball's point of view, it was an absolutely terrific game. Nothing one-sided about it at any stage throughout. Six very, very good players, six hardened players playing at the top level of their game. And great stuff, I have to say very little come down. I can understand the situation that with regards to uh, Australia at the end. They had to go for it as the Aussie team come down to commiserate with their, their colleagues. Sorry guys, hard luck. We were there just a, a few hours ago. All six players contributed greatly to this match. Right from the start though, Johan de Plessis really played well. Little tap in again. Didn't look even possible for that shot to be the case. Dropping around the outside. That was an extra shot for Mark Casey. There you go. Well done, Mark. And didn't get the best result on that second ball. But it was good stuff. No one could argue with it. A little solid one. Every end seemed to provide something. Very, very loose stuff. Wayne Turley getting off the ball. He contributed greatly as well. There's the ball. There's the man. Gippy Vermeulen. For me, he was the man of the match. He played so well. He really did. But a lot of celebrations during this game. 
and that's when it all started to go wrong. So it's Australia lose to South Africa in the final. So it's commiserations then to Australia. They've lost both the triples today, the women's this afternoon, the men's tonight, but well done to Australia. Today at the Commonwealth Games, the seven spectacle starts on Sky Sport 4. Nick Willis is in the 1500 meter heats on Sky Sport 5. Our world champ Val Smith hits the green on Sky Sport 7. The Delhi Commonwealth Games. Today, check guides for times. Well, a bit of a disappointing uh, morning here at the Bowls for New Zealand, but uh, to help me tell you all about that, I've, I've brought in a gentleman who, uh, who knows a bit about the rinks and, and also the inside of the few Bowls club rooms, John McBeth. A gentleman. Uh, Thank a you A gentleman. <laughs> it's certainly a gentleman. Well, it's a lot different here, mate, to what uh, we get in New Zealand. With this, uh, this is my first visit here to, uh, to see what conditions they've got, and these English carpets that they're using are vastly different to what, what the New Zealand team is used to. But, you know, they've trained here, they've been here earlier, and so they were sort of aware of what to expect but gosh it, it looks different it really does <laughs> and it certainly feels different doesn't it i mean this morning we've, we've got the hawks swooping you, you, you certainly don't get that uh, at home it's quite extraordinary and uh, and i sometimes felt in danger uh, for the players you know they there's a hawk swoop down as the ball was being delivered uh, you'd just about be putting up a protective umbrella mind you the umbrellas are blown around all over the place today it, it's great a great background <laughs> it certainly is but uh Poor old Val Smith, who first game this morning against uh, Helen Grinling from South Africa yeah. and, and went down two sets to nil. Yes, and uh, you know she was always in with a chance, but things weren't falling her way. Uh, it seemed to be the South African would get one really good shot on there, and, it, and uh, Val couldn't get a rhythm going. You know she played well, but she's got a tough you know, couple of games ahead of her too, particularly against uh, the Malaysian, Malaysian uh, Lena. She's, you know, saw her at the World Championship. She fires all over the place. She's she's really good, but uh, Val even refers to her as a robot. So, yeah, but she can knock her over. She's done it before. She won the World Championship. She knows what it's like. And we actually caught up with Val after her game and uh, you know as you said John she remains pretty upbeat. 